I really do expect to have some fry by now. They're my favorite fish from Lake Tanganyika. I don't think he's in the mood for it today. You can probably guess what I'm about to say next. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my December 2021 fish room update tour. The last fish room update tour for the year 2021 before I do my full fish room tour for the year 2022 next year. Anyway guys, let's get into this month's update. But before we get into this week's video, I thought I'd just quickly mention that over the last few months, I've had some audio issues with my videos. Some of you guys with very good hearing have been hearing a high pitched sound in the background of my videos. Now, unfortunately, my hearing isn't good enough to hear that high pitched sound that some of you guys have been reporting. I've had friends and family look at the videos and try to hear out for that sound. None of them have been able to hear it. I've played around with the camera settings and my mobile phone settings and I thought it was the mic at first, but it wasn't. Uh, I've been turning off the fan that circulates air in the fish room, all the return pumps, all the internal power filters. Wasn't able to remedy the solution because I was still getting some of you guys reporting back that there's a high pitched sound in my videos. Well today, I think I've found the issue. And it might seem silly at first, but when I was setting up to film this video today, turn all the pumps off, turn the fans off, and I even turned the lights off because I could hear this high pitched sound for the very first time. And it might be silly, but it turned out to be the air con. <laughs> Whenever I was filming footage in the fish room, I never thought to turn the air conditioner off. And today I was going, it was driving me mad. I could hear this sound. Everything was off in the fish room, even the lights. I thought even some of the LEDs might be making that sound, but no, all the, the everything was basically off in the fish room, but I could hear something running in the fish room still. That was the air conditioner. I turned that off, the sound stopped. So please guys, let me know. Can you still hear that high pitched sound in my videos? I really hope you can't because I don't know what else it could be. But anyway guys, now let's get into this week's video. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one, and it is my Neal Amprologus Simulus Aquarium. I've had these guys for a number of months now, and I originally had them in quarantine in the sump system on the rack behind me. And then I had them in a tank with the gold comps, three gold comps and these guys and uh, because the gold comps were pretty small at the time. And these guys, the Similis, were bossing the gold compressor steps around in that quarantine aquarium, which is quite uh, amusing. Uh, that's how aggressive these guys were compared to the comps. But I'm sure if I left them in there, once the comps grew to be their maximum size, these guys would have been getting belted. <laughs> um, so these guys, I decided to move them out of that quarantine tank once their quarantine period was over into this aquarium. Uh, they were plugged into the sump system eventually, uh, and then I eventually moved them into this uh, two-foot aquarium with the intentions of breeding them. Uh, they initially looked like a pair. Uh, one definitely, as you can see on camera there, one definitely seems to be the dominant one, and the other one seems to submit to uh, its dominance, so to speak. Uh, it shimmers its body towards it, um, and yeah, that's kind of the typical behavior you would expect to see from a pair. Uh, like that shimmering there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful markings on these fish. But yeah, so I haven't had any spawning activity, unfortunately. I believe these two are males, um, and it's just that uh, they just get along, I suppose. And um, yeah, I really do expect to have some fry by now. Uh, they've been in this aquarium for at least five, six months, I believe. And yeah, unfortunately no spawning, so I need to buy some more. And I am aware that there are some around in Sydney, so I will pick some uh, more up and we'll get some spawning activity in this aquarium soon. The other thing I should mention uh, with this tank, it's not the greatest looking aquarium by any means. Uh, and there is a cyanobacteria uh, outbreak in this aquarium. On this rack, for some reason, I really struggle with cyanobacteria. On my sump system, I don't. Uh, I can only assume that the filtration on these aquariums isn't enough. I do do water changes every week on these aquariums. And as, like I said, there's only two fish in this two foot aquarium. So uh, the bio load is pretty minimal, but I still get cyanobacteria outbreaks. So I'm using ChemiClean to treat that occasionally. And that does a fantastic job on it. But anyway, there you go guys. I'll be picking up some similars again in the next few months and hopefully we'll get some spawning activity from this aquarium soon. And the next tank getting an update this month is this one. I show this tank frequently on my aquarium and my fish room update tours, but pretty much whenever these guys spawn, I show you guys the tank. So you can probably guess what I'm about to say next. They have spawned, big surprise. Uh, this is their eighth spawn. 
Uh, there are actually fry now that have exited the parent shell. You can see there's two shells in the middle of the aquarium there. The one on the left is the one they always spawn in out of the eight times. All those spawns have been in that shell on the left and that predominantly is the male shell. So there are fry, as I said, in the aquarium now. They've exited the shell. Um, I have been feeding this tank over the last two to three days and getting another tank prepared for this spawn. I don't have many spare tanks in the fish room, so I've had to consolidate some fish together to make way for these fry. But anyway, so it's gonna be a busy day in the fish room after I finish recording this monthly update. I'll be catching out the fry from this aquarium and putting them in their grow out tank on the top row, like I usually do with my white Alto Lamprologus calvus. When I spawn my black Alto Lamprologus calvus, I move the female with her shell into a brand new aquarium and I let her raise the young for about approximately a week and then I take her out of the tank. And that's purely because my black Alto Lamprologus calvus don't get along when they're spawning, whereas my white Alto Lamprologus calvus, the pair is strong, their bond is strong, and they, don't, they do not fight at all. So I, let, I don't want to break that bond at all, so I just take the fry out of the tank um, when they come out of the shell. The parents play no part in raising the young, so there is no real point for me to risk breaking the bond with the white calvus when it's worked for me the past seven times with just removing the fry and putting them into a grow out tank. There's less stress on the parents in doing that rather than splitting up the female from the male for about a week and then reintroducing her to the male. I fear that I could break the bond and he could potentially kill her when I put her back in the aquarium. And obviously don't want to risk that. Again, it's worked for me in the past, so I'll just stick to that with the white calvus, the black calvus again, because there's so much fighting when they spawn. I take the female out with the shell and the fry and uh, it's obviously much easier to deal with because I don't have to worry about catching all the individual fry and putting them in the tank, just moving the shell from one aquarium to another, and that's done. But anyway, guys, on to the next aquarium. And the next tank getting an update is my Black Alto Lamprologus Calvus Fry Tank. These guys are just over one month old, and there are loads in here. And I just wanted to quickly show you guys what one month old Alto Lamprologus Calvus Fry look like. And they haven't really put on much size, I mean, they've grown a tiny bit, but yeah, for being four to five weeks old, uh, they are really slow growers, pretty much, the, uh, pretty much the slowest growing fish I have in the fish room. They have that reputation that they are slow growing fish, and I can 100% confirm that that is true. I just love looking at this tank and watching the fry school in the tank. Uh, there's so many calvus fry from this one spawn, and this is the second time I've spawned the black calvus. I just, can't, I just can't really believe that they've had this many fry. Uh, this is the 10th time I have spawned calvus, but the second time I've spawned the black calvus. As I said, I've just spawned the white calvus for the eighth time. So that's 10 spawns all up for me from my calvus. Uh, I love these guys, I love calvus, and they are my channel logo. Uh, they're my favorite fish from Lake Tanganyika, obviously. And um, raising them and um, having so much good success with uh, Calvus, it's uh, made me extremely happy. But yeah, watching this school uh, swim around the tank is pretty impressive just because of the sheer number of fry in it. It's like a big cloud of fish in the one aquarium. I will say, however, though, that these Calvus, uh, this spawn, this specific spawn you're looking at right now, is very skittish. It is the most skittish spawn of Calvus fry I've ever uh, had and um, I try and approach this tank with caution because as I say in a lot of my Calvus videos or Calvus related videos, Calvus fry are very fragile, especially at a young age, and I do everything in my power to not stress these guys out. Um, on either side of the aquarium, you can't really see it in this shot, I've got black plastic so they can't see the fish on either side of the aquarium. That was put there predominantly because when I had the female in here in her shell, she could see the Leilupi on one side and the Lamprologus ocellatus gold on the other, and it was just stressing her out too much, and she was attacking them through the glass. So I inserted some black uh, separators so she couldn't see them. Um, and I've kept them there purely so these guys feel at ease and can't see the large fish on either side of them. Uh, the other thing I need to do is put another piece of black plastic on the, uh, underneath the light so this, this tank doesn't get the, the light like you see here. Like I've seen in a lot of my other videos about Calvus, I don't like to have light on the Calvus fry tanks because the, the light turning on and then turning off can stress them out as well. 
Uh, but yeah, I just really wanted to quickly show you guys the progress these black calvers have had. Uh, and I'm just really, really happy that they're doing so well. Touch wood, uh, but just watching that school of uh, fry looks incredible. Um, but if I was to try and get up on the ladder and approach that tank, they'll all dart to the back of the tank and will stress them out. So I try not to do that too often, obviously, but it's pretty um, unavoidable when you're feeding them. Anyway, there you go, guys. That's what uh, white Alto Lamprologus calvus look like, just over a month old. While I was filming my intro and talking about the audio issues in the fish room, I noticed that the corner of my eye, uh, these guys, my albino bristlenose catfish breeding pair, uh, in the process of spawning. The female's in the cave, the male's not happy about it, but she really wants to spawn. You can see he's trying to thrash his body around and get her out of there, but it's not gonna happen, buddy. Uh, so yeah, just noticed it out of the corner of my eye and I thought I'd quickly just show you guys what that looks like. <laughs> he has to raise the young himself. Uh, that's what Bristlenose catfish do. The male raises the babies, the female just deposits the eggs in his cave, exits. God, she plays no further role in raising the babies. I don't think he's in the mood for it today. So there you have it guys, my December 2021 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.